All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Doug had asked a question in the last session that who who is in all? So when I say I think Doug meant uh, when I say all, so all cool beans. Somebody who is not a cool bean is not in all. <laughs> Actually, I started off with all. So Jenna, you are first today. Very welcome. Shock is there. Hello, Carolyn is here. Hello. Um, again, yes, absolutely. Hot chili is here. Hello, hot chili bean. DDS not first. Sorry, DDS. Lorraine is there. Uh, Kirby, hello from Algebra Bean. Hello, I love your name, Algebra Bean. Anna Hellman, hi, everyone. And then Jenna Teller, I, Denise, hello, Denise, welcome. Margaret, back. Welcome back, Margaret. Um, Barbecue Bean, <laughs> I love this one. Hi again, welcome. Um, <laughs> so Jen Jenna is talking about the donut. So did you did you like the donut that I made? I made some fancy schmancy little sprinkles on it as well. Rene is there as well. Bam Bean is here. Bama Bean, very nice. I haven't changed my bean name yet. I lost the link. Let me see if I can get the link. Um, the link is uh, Cool Bean Title Registry. So I am going to put this here in the. All right. So I just posted the link. Anyone who would like to. <laughs> Chuck Becker says, excellent rendition on. So sorry, I was going to. Uh, you're welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Where is Chuck Becker? Chuck Be here. Chuck Becker says, excellent rendition of a donut. Yes, I was pretty proud of it. The uh, So if I show you the, vi the bacteria with that. Do I have it here? The bacteria with the with the antigen sprinkled on it, that grossed me out, although I made it. <laughs> but that made me. So that this grossed me out. But this donut with the sprinklies on it, do you see that I have some sh shading going on as well? <laughs> so that is what I did. Excellent. OK, so let's see some questions. And welcome, everyone. Doug says, question, is fusion protein on the surface of spike visible to antibodies? So ideally, it should be. And Doug, uh, if I read the subtext here, if it is visible to uh, B cells, not to antibodies, um, then they can make the antibodies. And then, yes, it has to be visible to antibody as well for the antibody to attack it. And I think that is what they mean. The fusion protein has to be on the surface and can be attacked by the antibodies. <laughs> Mercy Turner says yummy. So I'm going to leave this picture up just to tickle the taste buds of everyone here, including my own who is fasting. <laughs> so Hot Chili Bean says, I saw a face in the donut. Did you? There's a face in there? <laughs> this is like sitting and looking at clouds and seeing faces, faces there. Kate Dalby says, What's your opinion on the possible menstrual problems women are reporting? This is such an important topic that I am behind on. So every week I make sure, just like with the long haulers, every week I make sure that I'll talk about children. I've done one talk, pregnant women, and then the uh, menstrual period uh, changes. So give me a few days. I want to read some studies before I talk about it. This is top of my uh, mind. But this new vaccine came up and wanted to talk about that. OK, so fishtail question, Dr. B, what if a new cancer vaccine or other would need to use the fusion pathway for entrance? Might there be some unwanted antibodies around? So there are so many uh, things that can um, connect with our membrane and enter it. And they all have their own fusion products. And just like we all have different face, the fusion, uh, the fusion protein is not common across all substances. If that is common, that will be the super, super, super vaccine.
that once you give this fusion protein antibody, then uh, all the viruses, all the bacteria, all the fungi, all other drugs that use the fusion mechanisms would all be gone or all other signaling pathways or all other cell fusion pathways. So that does not happen. This is this is just like if we have a bolt and uh, uh, or a nail to hammer that nail. There are so many types of hammers. So this is this virus has a unique protein which acts like a fusion protein. And we can block this, but that would not block other things to fusing from fusing with our cell membrane. Very good question. Uh, Anish says, Dr. Bean, it has been said that the variants transmit more via aerosol transmission compared to the earlier variants. Is this true? And can you explain further on this point? So no, it is not true. So this, I do not know. In the beginning, when the variant discussion started, I was I had protested a little bit to say we are doing too much about variants. It's like science is being uh, seen once again, all over again. Variants are important to keep an eye over. So they are variants of concern, then variants under in investigation, and then variants that become variants. But still, if you see, many variants have been uh, taken care of by vaccines or by our bodies, our immune systems. So this, this is a rumor that a variant now works more with aerosol. The virus presence in the moisture or aerosol is not virus's own will. Virus cannot decide that I want to ride a droplet or a, an aerosol. It's, it cannot say I want to take a plane or a car. Virus is present in our mucous membrane in our mouth and nose. And then as we talk, whatever we are making, a droplet or an aerosol or both or the droplet comes out and it goes out and becomes shrunken and becomes an aerosol. If the virus is sitting in there in the mouth, it's going to be part of that product. So th this is just a bad dreamer. Doesn't even hold up scientifically. <laughs> Barbara Warren says, this is the sugar addicts donut vaccine. Yes, but I remember, I think you would not forget this vaccine type now because I connected it to a donut. Maybe the name should now become donut vaccine. Ghassan uh, Hashki says, doing IL-6 level test necessary to start a up. Hey, Luffy. What's going on? Sorry, Luffy has some problem. Hey, Luffy. What happened? What happened? Is it the cat outside or something is bothering you, huh? What happened? Cat, tell me. No? Okay, so Luffy is upset. All right. So uh, back to the question. Necess necessary to start to up? No, so clinically, if you feel that the patient is in a situation where they are showing the signs of cytokine storm, then you can start looking at the interleukin-6 levels, which are necessary to start doing as the patient is in ICU. But if you feel that, hey, this may be happening, you start the drugs immediately. These are the cases where you start the management and then you do the labs. And again, the start the management, looking at the patient, I'm assuming all the rest of the thing, the history, eligibility of the patient for that, their health, all of that is seen. Rubies are red, says Canada. Rubies, uh, Canada? Janet also says Canada. What happened to Canada? So Pasi says, uh, Holy Stewart, there are more than 3,000 mutations already seen in the genome database, and response still works against the newest. Yes, and, and uh, uh, Pasi, if we go to nextstrain.org, let's go to that. I always show that. If we go to nextstrain.org or the outbreak.org, you would see that for if you go here for SARS-CoV-2, latest global analysis. When I'm when I'm sharing the screen, it usually all of these dots 
are variants or branches of the variants. So variants of the variants. And if you read down here, I read it very often. If you read down here, they are saying there are hundreds of thousands of complete SARS-CoV-2 genomes available. There are hundreds and thousands of genomes available. And this number is increasing every day. This visualization can only handle about 3,000 genomes in a single view for performance and legibility reason. Because of the, this new subsamples available genome data, these analysis, uh, because of this, we, we subsample available genome data for these analysis views. So hundreds of thousands of variants, not one variant or two variant or four variants or six variants, hundreds of thousands of variants. And then here you can actually see them. You can you can hover the mouse over some variant. For example, this is a Mexico CHP INDRE underscore 265 over 2020 variant. So this is a variant found in Mexico in year 2020. The mutations it has is nucleotide mutations, and these are all the mutations that it is that are given. Then amino acid mutations that are given on the open reading frame 1A, 1B. Then the divergence from, from this branch, how many variations came out? 16. And then date of finding 8-4-2020. Clade, which subfamily it is, it belongs to, it belongs to 220B. Author, the ones who found it and reported it are here. And this is just one dot I, I put my cursor on. You can go and put the dot on any of them and you can see what's happening. If that does not uh, help further, you can go in here. You can say global. You can say for a country. You can say show me in a radial map and show me the travel of a clade or a variant. So um, there is there are hundreds of thousands of variants. These variants that we become very concerned about, they are the ones that we feel that they are sitting on the spike protein, some mutations. They have some mutations of the spike protein that are dangerous. And so this is how it is uh, going. <clears throat> So back to the donut here as well. <laughs> so a simple garden, they stop flights from India into Canada, I see. And I actually think that it is reasonable to um, make sure that the uh, infection does not spread. And so it is fine to be protective at this time. It's going to be OK, yes. Dr. Griff Bean says, question, Dr. B, have you researched the Sincetian, Sincetian Sincitin homologous protein aspect of the spike protein that is though to possibly target placental formation in utero this to cause a pregnant failure possibility i have to so i understand well, sincitin you're talking about is the placental protein that is present in the placenta so you're saying that the virus has a protein that is similar to the sincitin protein and that uh, I have to research this. So as I research the pregnancy and, and um, female uh, issues with this, I would research this as well. Thank you very much for the suggestion. So Paul Bork says, I see 53 likes and 212 watching, now 247, so about 25%. Guys, the math is coming your way. Paw, as the cool beans say, paw the like button. OK, so more questions. <laughs> Barbara Warren says, Lotus says this is her kind of webinar when Luffy Muse, she rubs her kitty cheeks on the edge of the computer screen. That is so cute. Luffy has his own <laughs> fandom going. I am a little jealous of Luffy. William Goff says, recovering, at least I hope, low FOD map diet plus Magi Q activate Hue probiotic seems to help. I have to be extremely cautious in what I eat. Lost 20 pounds. Wow. So take care of yourself and uh, let's talk a little more. So our patient forever says Canada has no vaccine supply and is waiting for resupply from the US. And US has extra vaccine, which nobody wants. So maybe we should just, just start sending them around to those who are willing to have them. Um, M. Gregory, have you tried NFT art with your medical illustrations? So I have. Uh, I, I created an account on Coinbase because somebody on uh, 
Twitter asked me to do it. So I created an account in Coinbase. I have created a wallet as well, but I haven't yet seen how to upload the NFT and put it up. So I have to do that. If anybody knows how to do it, I would love your help. So this is the last weekend. I do those kind of things over the weekends because during the weekdays, I'm just doing either business or these discussions. So I don't get time to do it. Uh, Chandra Sekhar Bara says, I read in news yesterday that a new variant in West Bengal named B1618 is skipping the immunity. Does this mean the vaccine doesn't work against this new variant? So Chandra, I have to look at that data to see it. But I can assure you that so far, variants have been not able to skip the immunity. This is why they are called a variant. If they actually, if there is one variant, one variant that skips the immunity, we will not call it a variant. We will call it SARS-CoV-3. So if there is a variant that is present and we are calling it a variant, then in general, it is not going to be skipping our immunity. Uh, and if it had, there is a virus that has escaped the immunity. That would be the biggest news in this time. So I don't think that it is there, but I, I have to read it before I can actually say with confidence. So Anish says, Dr. Bean, there have been reports on many hospitals giving NSE to COVID patients, and the results seem to suggest they work really work well. What's your take on it? So other than <laughs> feds knocking on my door to say, why did you say something can help? Uh, Anish, I had done this uh, talk about NSC 10 months ago to say it works. And this is part of our prophylaxis as well to stay as protected as we can. Fishtail, question, crazy thought. Since fusion protein is so good, maybe it could be used for cancer. Can't help to think it may be our best future weapon possible. Um, helping, so cancer has an altogether different mechanism. So we have to, we should discuss how the cancer works and how it becomes cancer, how we cannot control it. What are the possibilities of control? What is the research? Just like COVID, now it's, it's like 500 talks about COVID. I think we should do some talks about cancer and uh, rheumatoid arthritis today, somebody suggested, and other hypertension, diabetes. We started, but we stopped. So we should do those discussions. But cancer and um, <laughs> Chuck Becker says wanted Luffy cam. I actually was planning to buy a camera to attach to him. So interesting thing, uh, I am very much sensitive to Luffy and Kairi and they being free and having fun. So we have not made them used to wearing the, um, what are these, the collars. So they don't have any collars or anything on them. So when uh, my wife sometimes wants to put a collar on them to kind of put some decorating things on them, they become so mad and they just keep uh, scratching it. So I thought of putting a camera, but then I thought now I'll have to put a collar on them as well. And I feel that they'll be annoyed. But maybe we should do it. If I just put a camera here, you can actually see him even during the discussions coming in and going and fighting with Kyrie and then doing all, all kind of funny things. Maybe that camera should be an additional camera here, Luffy cam with the lecture. Christine says a super vaccine equals super side effects. No. So the idea of the super vaccine, the basic idea was that it can cover all uh, viruses. E. coli do not, E. coli based vaccines do not have the super side effects. So Alint Bhatti says, question 20 days after the vaccination, AstraZeneca today, I tested COVID IgG, the result was zero. What is the reason? You don't have the IgGs yet. So wait for the second vaccine as well, or wait for some more time. France Lorraine says, one third flights to Canada and internally have an infected person. Oh, wow. And Alind, it is also possible that the 
T cell pathway is taken, it is also possible that the uh, body is still making antibodies. It is possible that antibodies are made and then stopped. And then we have to wait for the booster to come in and help as well. So there are many possibilities. Paul Borg says, question, why hasn't infections with common cold coronaviruses already had the same effects as the potential vaccine? That's a, see, so Paul, this is that question that should be combined with Nick's question yesterday. And that is that if I have common cold, with, or I have 86% of humans have coronaviruses in their throat, human coronaviruses. Human coronaviruses have fusion protein as well. And so if our body has made antibodies against those proteins, then the new virus SARS-CoV-2 should be captured as well. My um, thinking is that what has happened is that these viruses, we are not killing them. They're sitting in our throat. We are not killing them because our, our immune system doesn't care about them sitting there. It just thinks they're uh, fine. This is called energy that our immune system and the, the virus or bacteria become friendly and they say, you know what, let's not bother each other. You just sit here and I would not kill you either. And they become guests with each other. The symb symbiotic relationship is formed. So if that relation, re relation is formed, then our, our immune system would know not to attack it. So it would not be making antibodies. So that is also possible. So now what is really the situation? Are those who are asymptomatic, is this because they have antibodies to uh, fusion protein? Remember that we know that those who are asymptomatic mostly go through the T helper one pathway and cytotoxic pathway. So maybe that is because of the antibodies to the fusion protein, they, they are already, they've made it. And that is why they go that pathway and they, they're not even bothered by the virus. So this is some research that needs to be done, but good question. Tara Gilliam says, can, and <laughs> so I am fasting and I'm looking at this, this donut again and again, and I'm saying, oh man, there is a donut there with glazing and <laughs> sprinkling. Can the COVID shot make you feel bad for five days, our second shot? It does. So I have, uh, Tara, I have done this discussion uh, previously as well. I have gone over the adverse reactions many, many times. And the COVID shot, I hope you mean COVID vaccine shot. Um, yes, in some people, it makes them very ill. Uh, there are some cool beans who said I took the vaccine and I'm still sick. And there are some that are sick for a couple of days. And then there are some who doesn't do not have any side effect. So, for example, I had Moderna. Other than my jaw pain, I developed jaw pain and it just keeps aching here. I sometimes cannot eat correctly because when I open my mouth, it hurts. And it, it was severe after the vaccine. But other than that, I had nothing. And now I have it on both sides. And that's it. I just have jaw pain, or jaw angle of jaw or the joint of jaw. But there are people who may have uh, more um, side effects as well. So yes, in short, side effects are possible. So Anish says, Dr. Bean, why is the virus hitting South Asia, primarily India, so much harder than the previous year? Death rates seem to be increasing among both the old and the young. Anish, uh, so my own, uh, there is a, there are many team members of mine who are from India. Some of them are doctors who work with me to help us produce lectures and questions. And out of three team members, so out of four team members, two team members' families are already sick. So it is so prevalent that within my own team, 50% of the people have gotten it. And even after they, they have been listening to my lectures, they are very careful. They understand that this is happening. The, the, the problem is this. Think about it for a second. One person somewhere in Wuhan got the virus and then it spread in the whole world. And imagine if millions of people have the virus. So the uh, congregations that were happening and that may still be happening. So the um, 
the Kumbh Mela or the um, what was that Holi? And these are great things. Uh, my own uh, team members were uh, celebrating Holi, and I wish them good Holi. So it's not that I'm 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 not criticizing, but Holi and the Kumbh Mela and then the election campaigns, all of them have an effect that millions of people got infected or hundreds of thousands of tens of thousands and now they're infecting others on top of this i also think that there is a feeling in india there was a feeling in india and that i th think was in pakistan as well that the virus is gone we have done it the other countries are stuck but we are we are done and the the spike has come back and the there are no more cases and it's just a little bit here and there and the old people are just protect them and then the spikes appeared everywhere so the it is people's behavior as well after the year one year of lockdowns and then i think it is the variant as well that are going faster so the cool beans that have been or had their families sick um, i'm seeing that they're even elderly became sick and came back so i think that there may not be more lethality but there may be just more spread and more spread is a behavior based thing as well plus the variant has speed as well so what i see is uh, i have always maintained that i don't find good data references for india so there is a doctor who has sent me some uh, but to understand what is happening what are the mechanisms so i now see two kind of groups one uh, group is trying to say that hey this is nothing to do with the uh, congregations of people this is mostly the variant then there is another group that is saying hey this is not variants this is mostly people just not uh, behaving in a disciplined way so it may be a mixture of both or there may be more things but i don't think that there is some super virus that has been generated which is doing this it is just population is a lot and behavior matters Janet says, Dr. Grippy Knight, good night. Um, P. L. P. Lee J says, relative with COPD uses Symbicort, which has budesonide. Is this a little protective? Yes, it is. Uh, I think it is protective, but that is just my opinion, not an advice. The study from UK showed it is protective, but they did not use it from the very beginning. So, for example, if I have a problem and I'm using it from the day one and I get infection, now would that allow the virus to replicate more or less? Don't know. But when used a few days later has been very useful. Okay, Nancy Park. Question, hypothetically, a 41-year-old female gets a severe skin rash seven days after the first Pfizer dose, or Allegra doesn't work, steroid cream, no help. Injection steroid works after nine days. Okay, second dose, no, talk with the doctor first. Because this seems to, although it is localized, so it looks like if you're saying skin rash, I'm hoping that by saying skin rash, it is localized. So if it is localized, that means there is some reaction somewhere that occurred that was abnormal. And if it did not go away that easily, then that means uh, there could be an, uh, a more severe response. So one should just talk with the doctor and say, hey, would I have more aggravated outcome like this? And they can probably see in the verse and research it. You can yourself look at that as well and see. But I will be. Um, I will be I will do my research before going for the second. So if it is me, I will go for my second, but I would do my research. Maybe I'll take some uh, uh, anti allergies of those. Aruj says, hey, Dr. Bean, hey, back to you. Um, more questions. So let's do a few more questions and then we stop for today. Stratili says, preparations before, day off, and few days after for the vaccine, nutraceuticals uh, or over-the-counter. So 
for me, the most important thing that I did for my family was that we made sure that our vitamin D levels and vitamins were correct. So that is the most important thing that we did so that I wanted our immune systems to respond in a balanced way. That was not a guarantee that it, the immune system would not react imbalanced, but at least I wanted it to be optimized. The second thing that um, I had done for my wife was that I had asked her to take an anti-allergy because she is she has allergies. And she still has headaches, but they come and go, and uh, but they're different from previous headache. So I think there is some management that was helpful, and she is doing, uh, I think she is saved. For me, I had not taken anything other than after the vaccine, I had to take painkillers for this jaw pain. I cannot open my jaw more than this much. It, I just have pain here. So, and this has been since the day of the vaccine. So um, I have this and I have to take anti-inflammatory for that. So I take one daily to help it in the morning and one in the evening. It is reducing in intensity, it is becoming better, but now it is two weeks. So um, CDC says anti-inflammatory painkillers can be taken. My opinion is uh, a good immune system, healthy immune system should be formed by supplements and then um, make sure you don't have allergies. If you have allergies, then talk with the doctor and see if you need to take anti-allergies. Ranjan Kumar says, is Oxford AstraZeneca is safe in cardiac patient on anticoagulant or someone with uh, congestive heart failure, low ejection fraction? S simple answer. The doctor has to figure this out, that if, if the side effect occurred, for example, from any vaccine, the side effect can be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, which can reduce the blood volume which can put stress on the heart to say, uh, the body would tell the heart to pump more with more force, with more uh, power and with more heart rate so that body can be satisfied with the volume of the blood that it needs. So if a patient cannot sustain a stress on the cardiovascular system, then they should talk with their doctor first to say, can I take this vaccine? We do not know if the side effect will occur, but if the side effect occurs, will there be support available? Because there can be, this is what happened in Netherlands, that when they injected the vaccine in some folks who were too fragile, and the, they still said that it is not related to the vaccine, but because they were fragile and they could not take the, the fever and the, lethargy plus uh, GIT problems, especially that reduce their blood volume, the, the, they died. So this has to be looked at by a doctor. I cannot see it, neither can I give an advice, nor can I just assess from here with this information. Lisa Peacock says, Lisa, I saw you after some time. Don't forget to give the link for the bird group conference I signed up last night. So um, they tweeted it and I retweeted it. I had asked for the, the link this morning and they said that this is only for medical doctors. And then they tweeted that out and I retweeted it. So can you please, Lisa, look at my Twitter and you would have an evidence-based medicine um, tw Twitter or tweeter and that is the link. We did a rehearsal this morning, so that went well. Um, there are very good panel of doctors who will be there. Um, I'm fortunate, I'm um, similar to FLCCC's conference. I will be um, chairing the conference for two days. Aruj says, question, doctor, just like people use convalescent plasma for people who have recovered from COVID, why can't we get plasma from people who are vaccinated as they, we can. <laughs> this is a good question. Somebody else had asked this a few days ago as well. Yes. if vaccinated, usually after the second dose, they, they may have enough IgGs to be useful. We, we can. Qu question is uh, quantity. <clears throat> because the vaccine's basic function is not to just produce antibodies right away, although it does. 
vaccines base, basic function is to train the immune system and create the memory cells so that when the actual infection occurs the cells wake up increase in number and attack the virus france is totally correct for the like button <laughs> lazy beans <laughs> So uh, P. Lee J says, Dear Dr. Bean, what about short-term carbapentin for the... Sure, I'll do it. <laughs> I, I, I was protesting that I don't want to have drugs, but it looks like it is not going away that easily. Cool. So... One more question and then we break for today. Millie says, hi, love your info. Thank you very much. I take Synthroid, Diltazim, and Hevsa. Can I take Moderna? Thank you. So the autoimmune diseases, it is actually not these, because autoimmune diseases have, um, are a comorbidity for the uh, COVID, these folks have been tested with the vaccine and the trials have shown them to be fine to take the vaccine. However, just like I said before, a person's individual health, how triggered is the immune system? How balanced is it? I can't say it from here or by knowing the drugs. It would have to be by your doctor who can look at you, who can take your pulse, who can look at your heart rate, your, your respiratory rate, your blood pressure, your history. And then based on that, they can say, okay, you know what, good to go or not. I can't make that decision. Neither should I being a, uh, we're just talking on internet. Uh, I'm not a doctor for any of the folks listening. So uh, I hope that you don't mind it, but talk with your doctor. Uh, from the vaccines point of view, they did trials on autoimmune disease patients and they were fine. They actually think it is important for the patients to take them. Cool. So uh, Margaret says, thank you, Dr. Bean, and have a successful uh, evening or something, I guess. Margaret, one part of the message is uh, cut off. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> yeah, Luffy's back here as well. And I hope you did not mind. I showed you the donut for the whole discussion. So uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And there are three links in the description. If you would like to support this work that we are doing, there is a link to buy me a coffee. There's another link to become a patron. And there is another PayPal link if you wanted to support this work in general. So thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.